DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. You're tuned in to DJN TV Live with your host, Brian S. Red. And we are live. We are there. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to our world here. There we go. We've got the uh, the, the signal. For some reason, it was a little bit a little bit gimpy here. I've got to get our video set here better for the show so we can see everything. All right. Wonderful. We are now good. Good evening and welcome out there in the internet world. We are on Facebook. We are on YouTube talking to you tonight. As this is one of our shows we do about every two months or so, somewhere in that ballpark. We have a variety of topics that have come from social media pages. I went and I scour different pages, getting different questions from people that I think would be questions that our esteemed experts could answer for you in an in in-depth way. Oh, who's in on the show? Brian is. Oh, excellent. Yeah, Brian is. So we'll, we'll this, get a credible answer. Yeah, we'll get a credible answer this time. And, you know, maybe we should almost... Should we have Brian go first tonight? No, <laughs> it's better when Jay goes first. I can do my Brian impersonation. That would be the album that Prince put out in 1971 that only I have a copy of. By the way, if you were watching us on Prince TV, YouTube, please like the video. Yes. Oh, the timer's up. The timer's up. We have got our questions. We want to get right into it because we've got Let's folks who, who are who get excited. Time's a waste. Get, get excited about this. Uh, Stop we can alternate already. who goes first. I, either way, bro. Okay, so our first question. Uh, the situation was um, the person needed more sound for their wedding uh, for a larger room. And they were wondering if they should put more speakers up by the stage where they were at or if they should move speakers around the room. Well, I would first ask, what did they need more sound for? Um, example. I've done weddings with up to 350 people with two 15 inch tops and a 12 inch EV um, ZXL A1 sub under the table. And then about 40 feet away on a wall had a 12 inch powered speaker. That was for cocktail, dinner, toasts, and then dancing. The client adamantly wanted the dance floor full and everyone else to be able to speak. So at that wedding, I was complimented on not having too much sound. Sure. I think sound is a tricky thing. When you put two speakers on either side of a table in a room that holds 600 people, will they hear everything? The answer is it depends. And it depends on what it is they need to hear. Cocktail, dinner, speeches. If everyone's quiet, yes. Do you need a bigger system? Well, it's relative to what you're doing. One, I find the bigger the system, the more frightened the elderly get. Two, no one has ever, and I mean this ever, in 23 years said to me, you were good. You just weren't loud enough. Never heard that. So whenever I hear this, this system is good for 150 people. This is good for 200. I always kind of laugh because 200 what? Dancing? No, it's not enough. 200 in a room? Yes. When dancing comes, I personally, and if you want to steal this, take it. I pride myself on saying to my clients, your mother and grandmother will be able to speak at a normal tone of voice, 10 feet off the dance floor, once dancing gets going. Bodies will absorb the sound. I'm only projecting to a 10 by 20, a 10 by 10, whatever the space is. You do not need to be loud in the back of a big room. I've done events that would absolutely, most of the people, and I know the level of intelligence and professionalism of the fans of DJ and TV, they would be astonished if they heard the systems I use for big rooms with big groups, 500 people running four speakers and two subs. Not enough. It was perfect because people that aren't dancing don't want to hear the music loud. People that are dancing want to hear it loud on the dance floor. You're only projecting 20 or 30 feet. So I tend to think we as DJs overthink sound. Yes, there's too little sound, but oftentimes 
The only way to find that out is through trial and error or to understand what it is that you own. When I used 15 inch powered speakers, I never used anything else. 100 people, 150, 200, never had an issue, never had a complaint because all they need to hear is speeches, toasts, cocktail, and dinner. Dancing is its own animal. You're only filling a small space. So I, I would like to know more information about the DJ that felt they weren't loud enough and what their definition of loud is. If it needs to be loud in the back, they're way too loud in the front and middle. I mean, that's just my opinion. I'll even give Brian an extra 38 seconds. No, actually, I already given you 38 seconds because four minutes is total time. Was, I, yeah, I was supposed to do two, two minutes, minutes for you. So I'll just say that Jay nailed it. <laughs> he did a really good job. I will say that if you're doing something like a school dance event or something, yeah, you're going to need a bigger system. But if you're doing things like wedding receptions, corporate events, where you do have conversation areas as well as areas where there is dancing, if it's not quite enough in the back, a little bit of rear and fill is good. You don't need anything obnoxious, just a little bit of rear and fill. I've used the Maui 5 Go back there. It works really well for that. And that's something I started doing this year. So yeah. Two. So I'm at two. Okay, I got you. Yeah, two, two. I, 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 I you should probably, yeah, I should have. I got excited when I saw the four come up. I'm like, oh. This no, I mean, the truth be told, as soon as you started talking, I'm like, Jay's answering this question perfect. He's yeah. saying everything I told him to say. Yeah. yeah. I, I think we all overthink sound. We really do. So, yeah, perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Um. Next one. Would you ever use non-powered speakers, basically a speaker with a separate amplifier in this day and age, or is that something that's just in the past for you? Jay, you can not start. For, not, not for what I do anymore. Oh, okay, Brian, you go first. Yeah, Yeah. well, I thought we'd alternate it. Okay, okay, sorry. Not, yep. not for what we do anymore. Part of the reason, uh, part of the problem with passive speakers, which is not amplified speakers, is that you have to match the amplifier up with the speakers. You have to do things like match up the impedance. You have to find the program power for wattage on the thing. So you have to have a headroom. When powered speakers became popular, I was so happy. I mean, when I first started doing YouTube videos, I was still using a passive system, and most people were. And I spent so much time in videos trying to explain to people how to match up power speakers and amplifiers. And to be very candid, I was relatively new to the concept because I used to blow stuff up all the time and I didn't understand why. <laughs> I was usually underpowering my speakers and after having my cabinets repaired several times, I, I figured out what the problem really was. So powered speakers are so nice because not only are they lightweight, not only are they just convenient as can be, and you don't have to carry around extra stuff, but the amplifier inside of the speaker is matched up to the speaker for headroom and program and all that stuff. So, no, I don't think there's any reason to use passives anymore. The only time I use passives is in my car stereo. Because yeah. I had unit power reason. Otherwise, I have no reason to. True. I yield my yeah. time to the gentleman from Temecula. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Um, I got really lucky. I did not own a van in the late 90s. So when I went to buy my own first system, even though I was running a multi op on boats and things like that. The store where I used to shop, and they actually just retired about six months ago, said, you know, you should look at powered speakers. So I bought a pair of DAS 15A, which stood for active, powered 15 inch speakers. I think I paid maybe $1,300 at the time. They were 200 watts each. 150 on the low, 50 on the high, and they were incredible. They sounded great. They were maybe 45, 50 pounds. They weren't that heavy, but I didn't have an amp. So with a regular car, I could put them in the back seat, load my coffin, put speaker stands, and then I had the whole trunk and front seat to put other stuff. So it's been so long since I ran amps. In fact, the last amp I ran was a precedent AB900, which weighs as much as the moon <laughs> it is insane to move and brian's right we were running like the old pv the plywood speakers that weighed everything yep. had the horn on top and then a 50, an 18 inch or 15 inch sub on the bottom we had yeah. black widows black widows on their own weighed like 25 pounds so 
if you're do, the the audio files I know will say if you're doing live sound, you have to have amplification because with powered speakers, you're doing you know processed music that's running one to one. But with live sound, you need a thousand watts to cover five hundred. You know what? If you want to carry amps and speakers, be my guest. Here's my argument. If I have two powered speakers and one blows, I have one powered speaker. If I have two powered speakers and one amp and the amp blows, I have silence. Yep. So in today's technology with the way speakers are, I, I don't understand why as a DJ, you wouldn't embrace that. Nightclubs run amps. They have delays, they have crossovers, they have all this stuff. But as far as us as DJs, run powered, run the ones you like, turn your back to the wall, listen to them and go with that. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I'll just, just add a little bit here. Sonic. Is any, did anybody run Sonic speakers? Oh, yeah. Yep, I had the sub in the top uh, where it was plugged into the sub and then it jumped right to the top. And Sonic is like right down the road for me. They still exist. They're in Cudahy, Wisconsin. And you've been to my house, John. Highway 32, you go south a little bit you're in cudahy mm -hmm. you've been to my house too. yeah we both have so you go south a little bit on mm -hmm. my street you end up in cudahy and that is where uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. yeah well no he was he was north oh. and west a little bit but <laughs> that's where sonic is and back in the old days they used to have this thing where it was like oh you know you can get rcf loaded sonics it's like yeah. what's rcf well you can get them it's an extra fifty dollars it's like it sounds better, so people would just get them. We didn't know what RCF meant because mm -hmm. we we're from Milwaukee, but yeah, that that was a thing. The Sonics that was it. That was a thing. And yeah, I will also add that I noticed at Nam, and I, I was kind of paying attention to this because I hear a lot of people talk about, oh well, if you have a band or you know concerts and stuff, then that case you run amp racks and things. I didn't see any passive speakers at Nam. Hmm. Even the big touring stuff, you know, had built-in amps. Yeah, they've got built-in on the back. Yeah, you see that. Yeah. The main stage in the middle ran amps. I saw that set up. Did did it? They ran must a, an old the system. VR system. They ran the must VR. Have, must have been an old system hmm. because everything that I saw. I mean, FBT, RCF. You know, the big heavy hitter guys. Everything was active. Even I think the arrays. When you get to a certain level of array, it goes passive. Like on the like the huge like the EDC type stuff. Stuff been. Could be. I think that's for tuning. You can't tune a powered speaker. Not too well. You can tune a guitar, but you can't tune a fish. Thank you, uh, Ario Speedwagon. You're welcome. All right, next one. Uh, t so they want to know. Uh, you get the two-wheel hand uh, trucks out there, convertible hand trucks, furniture movers, different things. What would you recommend a DJ get for moving their gear around? I did a video several years ago. And I called the video the greatest piece of gear I've ever purchased. And the video circled around one simple thing, the rock and roll cart. I've used the Grundorf, which is a foldable, just like a flat square, like a furniture mover. But with a <laughs> handle, I've used regular furniture moving. I've used dollies. If you don't want to end up a cripple, buy a rock and roll car it folds up it sits in the front seat of any car you can own i bet i could fit it in the front seat of a miata i'd bet any amount of money and it will carry everything and anything i moved and at one point put a refrigerator on my rock and roll car at another point i folded down extended it folded one end down and put a couch and then pushed the couch out on a rock and roll car. It's now, the best money you'll spend. And now, Jay, those Absolutely. are typically anywhere from 100 to $150 more than you could find some other options at your big box store. Is it worth that additional investment? Yes, all day long, yes. The rock and roll cart that I'm using today is eight years old. Wow. So over those eight years, how many dollies would I have broken, snapped, had to put air in the tire or something else, whereas this rock and roll cart will go anywhere at any time and is flawlessly flawlessly always ready brian what are your thoughts i uh, i'm with jay i've used a lot of different types of carts i've used things where you had to inflate the tires i've used this milwaukee brand cart which is a pretty heavy duty cart you used to be able to buy them at home depot for like 200 bucks and i've used the groove gear cart that kind of is supposed to turn on a dime 
real cool technology. There's a couple problems though. One is weight, and the other is blowing out bearings in the wheels. I will say with the rocket roller cart, the disadvantage is they don't roll as well as many of the other carts that I've used because the wheels don't have bearings in them. They're they're just almost like like a big wheel. <laughs> you know, like you get when you were a kid, like a toy car or something, there's no bearings involved. But the weight is wonderful. They collapse and and yeah, you can you can put a lot of gear on those things. You're not gonna screw them up. They're no. built really well. Side side note, John, real quick. On the rock and roll carts, I always upgrade to the wider, thicker wheels mm -hmm. on the front. I had the thinner wheels and I'm in the process of upgrading those. They're still fine and I've still used them, but I'm doing more and more events where I've got to go through grass or dirt and you need the wider wheel yeah. and you're good to go. Yeah, I've got the, awesome. I think it's an R14 cart and it's got the wide wheels on it. Yeah, you're right. I think I have an R12 and it came with the standard thinner wheels, but you can upgrade. In fact, if you don't mind me making a recommendation, NLFX Pro has them and you yes. can call them at any time during business hours. And they'll be happy to help you out. And what's really kind of cool <laughs> is they will actually have the carts at Photo Booth Expo coming up here, or at Photo Booth Expo DJ and TV show. So you're able to go and touch and feel and pick the one you want. Yeah. And come uh, by the chill room, and Brian and I will be happy to point you in the direction of which one to buy. Yeah, they should put some in the chill room. But no, they're so they're, they're they're really good. Cash. That's that's the cart that everybody should probably look at. I mean, for what yeah. we do as mobile DJs, it fits it fits the bill good. so perfectly. I can usually, not always, but I can usually put all of my gear on on the cart with one load. Yeah. Excellent. Usually. Next topic. Um, somebody was referring to the uh, some killer deals on wireless microphone systems that they could find on Amazon, which they were referring to a four uh, a, a receiver with four microphones. Their question was: Is if is it worth the extra thousand dollars to be buying a name brand compared to the Amazon one hundred and eighty eight dollar for microphone um, device? Brian, you go. Oh, uh, the one that I like right now is two hundred bucks. By the way, uh, I don't think anybody needs a thousand dollar microphone unless you're. I don't know. I don't know what you'd be doing for a thousand dollar microphone. I like. A nice guest microphone that I is a brand name I can rely on that 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 is tried and true. LD Systems has the U three hundred right now. It's two hundred bucks. So if I hand it to a, a best man and he's drunk and he drops it and pops the capsule in it or whatever, I'm not gonna lose my marbles about it. For me, a wireless microphone is a guest <laughs> microphone. I don't personally use a wireless microphone at the booth because my mic is, Mountain. well, I don't run around and like conduct the cha-cha slide anymore. I'm just not built for that anymore. Yeah. So if I'm on the mic, I'm standing behind the booth. I have a gooseneck coming up so I can push buttons and talk at the same time. Otherwise I'd have to set the microphone down, then press play. And that sucks. So it's on a gooseneck and it's wired. I don't have to take it anywhere with me. But even at that, I mean, yeah, I I don't see a reason to buy a thousand dollar microphone anymore, guys. Hmm. Because it's kinda like to me it's like a toothbrush. I'm not gonna share my toothbrush, I'm not gonna share a microphone. I got a guest microphone, it's wireless, take it, drop it, throw it across the room. I don't care, it's two hundred bucks. I can build it into the price if I want to. Um so that's I think the way I want to go now. I don't know about these off brand Amazon ones. I don't know. But mm -hmm. but what I can tell you is that there are name brands out there that are at really attractive price points that you can step into now. Nice. Jay, what's your thoughts? Um, I'll be honest with you. I read a lot of the posts on Facebook that say, I just bought this $75 mic. Mm -hmm. I used it the other night. I've got a video. Look, I can walk 400 feet. It never drops signal. And I have absolutely all the faith in the world that they're telling the truth and that everything they say is a fact. But the issue becomes this. If everyone on Facebook is not DJing your event and you are, you need to buy the best possible mic you can get your hands on. And this is why. 2003, March. So 17 years ago, I had a wedding at a hotel and I was using a Shure Vocal Pro microphone that I bought for $150. 
microphone, no antenna, two little antennas on the base, one channel. The client had the toast during dinner and they kept breaking up. Oh, yeah. And they broke up and they broke up. And the client was a little high maintenance to begin with. And she came back to me and said, I'm so upset with you. We haven't even gotten to dancing yet. We're at dinner. And I say, I'll make it up to you. End of the night, they danced a lot. They had a good time. I'm like, dodged a bullet. She comes up and says, I'm still really upset about this. I want a partial refund. I said, okay, what, what seems fair to you? She's like, half. You ruined that. And, well, you know what? I don't, okay. So I had to refund her at the time. I think I charged her 900 for the wedding. So I had to refund her $450. Right. Mm-hmm. My logic was, if this happens again, and the client says this again, I'm out 450. I bought the Audio Tech 3000. I then replaced that Audio Tech 3000 in 2016 because it's stripped with a new one. I'll replace that one because of channel changing at the PBX show with Ben Stowe with a new Audio Tech. If it's for your clients, for a ceremony, for something important, you damn well better not have it break down. So I don't think a thousand. I think I'm going to spend probably 400 bucks on mine. If, if you can't trust it 100 percent, upgrade. Sounds good. All right. Let's move to the next topic, gentlemen. Uh, Where did it go? The one I wanted to get to. No, Technology has come a long way with those things the last couple of years. Oh, it really has. It absolutely has. But again, you have to trust 100 percent when you turn your back where you have a lav pack on and the minister turns, you can't have that breakout. Yeah. No, you, you, six you, years ago, I would have, I would have been with you on that, but, but the way things are now, it's, it's just different. Yeah. I'm not nice Speaking no, no, of no. technology, the next one, uh, with today's better technology and such, would you recommend going back to see your CD collections and re ripping the music in today using today's technology, as opposed to what we had 15 years ago when we started ripping our music in? Uh, Jay, I think you're first on this one. Okay. John, let me just reach behind me here as I come up with... Oh, there. That one's for you, Brian. I don't know if you can make that out. Yep. Sweet. Yep. Sorry, um, and, of course, we have the 20th anniversary here. I don't know too much mm-hmm. light. Um, I'm actually going through old CDs that I ripped and now want to rip them to hard drives. And the biggest downside for me is that None of the tags are showing up. So I'm getting track one, track two, track three. But, you know, my wife's like, you're going to get rid of those? I'm like, no. She's like, why not? I'm like, you know, you never know. Even though streaming's on the cusp, you just never know. Maybe it'll come back to CDs someday. I, I'm, I think as a DJ, I have a real phobia with ever getting rid of music. Like, once you own it, you should keep it. But also... I look at the tracks I have and I go, Ooh, someday somebody's going to want to hear this weird version of something. No, they're not. (laughs) You know, I talk to DJs all the time who are very successful. And I'm like, how many songs do you bring to a gig? And they're like 18,000, 14,000, 22,000. I'm like, I'm bringing like 60,000 songs. They're like, why you're not playing all of them. I'm like, but that's part of being a DJ. I have like, you Mm -hmm. can't have enough music. So I, I think even with the technology change, you know what? I like keeping them at arm's length. You know, I mean, they're right there. <clears throat> Make that out, but there's. But like Jay, would you re- them would far. you re-rip them from to get them at a higher bit rate or at a better compression than you did the first time you went through them? All day long. Okay. Yeah, I, for that for that end of the technology, yes, and that's the downside. I have those MP3 CDs that have got like 96 kilohertz bits, and yep. it's like. Ugh. Brian, what's, what's your thoughts? Well, yeah, I think it's a great idea to go back and re-rip that collection. When I was first ripping stuff through, I was probably ripping it at like a 120 bit rate. And then as I learned that, you know, 320 uh, kilobytes was, was much better for MP3 format, I started doing that. But I can still go back. There are songs like uh, recently there was one, Fishing in the Dark by Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. I ripped it in years ago. And every time I go to play it, it sounded just awful. And finally, I just ended up downloading a fresh copy of it because I couldn't find my CD. Sure. Probably in storage at my mom's house or something. But, yeah, I think it's a good idea to keep those around. 
and re-rip them. Right now, I know people are using things like even Flack. Now, I don't know a lot about this technology. I need to learn about it, but there's going to be some file format that's going to come out that's going to be really easy to use. It's not going to take up a lot of space, and it's going to be really good. Do you know who... Um, oh, boy. Herbie Jr. is Herb Pump Powers. He was the guy who used to do all of the, the cutting of the records, like the masters. Like he would actually take the, the, the vinyl or the, the, the wax and he would cut it, master the record. And, um, you know, for a lot of people, Shannon's Let the Music Play was her pump powers. There were several, several, was several. A lot of, huh? Was he Chicago? No, New York. Okay. In fact, the, the, the mastering service was above Studio 54. It just happened to be there in that same building. Uh, now Herb is like one of the everybody wanted Herb to cut the records because he was able to get the best bass out of a record. He knew how to make those grooves happen. Everybody wanted Herb to master the stuff. Uh, I know Herb. He's a good guy. I talked to him, and he says that to this day the best file format ever is MP3. It's wonderful. You're going to get the best range. I, I'm sorry, CD. CD format is the best uh, file format there's ever been. As far as, you know, sound goes and bass hits and highs and mids and all that. And MP3, he thinks is absolutely horrid. He thinks it's just a waste of time. Just throw it away. It's junk. <laughs> uh, but, but I mean, that, I guess there, there's something to be said about that. If you have a store-bought CD, like a legitimate, you know, CD, not a burnt CD, but a legitimate CD, it's the best you're going to get. I mean, yeah, you can get remastered ones and things like that, but that's a fantastic, you know, Sound quality. In fact, when you're testing speakers, I would, 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 would when you're testing speakers, I would recommend that you use a CD no, CD player because you're going to get the best sound. That a lot better than MP3 or streaming on YouTube or something. I went a little long. Sorry. Yep. No problem. Let's jump to the next one. Um, mm. uh, the talk was about ceremony sound systems. And people were wondering what would be the basics that you would offer in a ceremony sound system so that you could add it to your, your uh, DJ system. And I think, Brian, you are up first. Yep. You can do <clears throat> a powered speaker. I mean, you know, the basics, you mean? Yeah, basics, basically to get started. So I can then say, I am now offering this service. Okay. Where I live, it's a little different than maybe where other people live because it's very popular for people to get married on the 18th hole of a golf course or in the middle of a cornfield or something. Barn weddings are big. I think they're that way where John lives as well. So I've been doing a lot of battery powered systems. I put something together, I think about a year or two ago, where I'm using the Maui 5 Go, which is a battery powered column array. And then I'm using the Colorado Sun and Light Lithium Ion Power Pack with the wireless microphone. It's a DC power pack, runs the mic wireless mic receiver for like 12 hours a uh, mic stand um, with the wireless mic on it and then i'm actually using a tablet uh, amazon fire hd 10 tablet hacked with the google play store running the dj program it's very small it's compact it's completely battery powered <laughs> and very lightweight very portable does fine for ceremony i mean because people are sitting right mm -hmm. you and, and they're not dancing you don't have to worry about pushing sound through people they're sitting down they're they're hearing everything really well through an array system i think it's a, a good way to go but you know ultimately i mean if you've got power at your disposal a 12 inch powered top is, is a good thing to have too and you can use absolutely a mixing board or a controller with a laptop but just to make it simple i i think for ceremony specifically because you're just playing a couple tracks i think you can do this off of a tablet the program like DJ and uh, just just some basics like that I think I think you can do real well you can add mics too by the way Jay what's your thoughts basics for a ceremony uh, system I have done the same system for ceremonies since 1998 in 1998 it was a DAS 15a powered speaker do the ceremony then lift the speaker and bring it in to the main system and then in 2004, I bought a 12 inch powered speaker, had two CDJs and a DJM 400 with two mics. Then that 
moved over to a controller, but the single speaker never changed. 100% I set up behind everybody. So I'm projecting at the ceremony, not from the ceremony at the guests. I don't like the look of two speakers being on either side of the bride and groom. I also think the magic of what we do is often hidden. And this is something that Brian has heard of. Real quick, um, a lot of my systems are outside. And with wind, lavaliers tend to get a little pushy. Yep. So I have a lot of videos online about this. I set up one wireless mic with a windscreen about chest high to the bride and groom and the officiant. So when the three of them are standing there, the mic is dead center. They all speak. I'm way away so I can control the volume. It sounds great. You don't see the mic. When they kiss, it's not in their way. They're standing in front of it towards the guest, the officiant behind it. And I've done that for going on 23 years. And I 100% have complimented, wow, it sounded good. It looked good. It wasn't, you know, mm -hmm. in their face. It wasn't ostentatious. It wasn't obnoxious. It wasn't anything. It's a microphone. It's one speaker. It's a controller, however you want to run it. And you just have one system. But I think only one speaker in the back going forward. Excellent. Next topic, gentlemen. This whole DJ podium versus DJ table versus DJ booth. Is this podium thing a fad that's going to go away? Or is this something that DJ should really be seriously looking into? And I believe, Jay, you are starting us. Um, define podium, like the old days, the 1980s podium, rack map. Podium, the podiums, uh, Joe Bunn has a podium system out there. Ah, that, 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 yeah. um, and then there's a few others that introduced them at NAM. So, Right. Um, and I saw them. And they look good. Um, I think it's all in what your presentation is. Facade, event table, podium, you know, some sort of a club vibe thing. <clears throat> you know, I look back at Steve Jones showing this stuff. Brian, what was that, 10 years ago, 11 years ago? Where 12, was, years, 12, 13 yeah, years ago, yeah. Yeah, where it was, check out the future, and we all kind of laughed. Well, yeah. guess what? The future is now. I think you need to come up with the look that fits your level of confidence. If what you have in front of you, it's the old adage. If you put on a shirt, you walk out of the room, and you go, how does this look? And you're not comfortable in it. It doesn't matter what anyone says. You're not going to be comfortable. You need to go with what makes you feel as though you're giving the best presentation, a facade, a cover, something to keep people from putting, I swore there, it got bleeped out, oh, yeah, just... print on your table, to me is the way to go. Do you want a white facade? I know guys that use only black facades. They light up the white facade. I, you know what? I think the Joe Bunn setup looks very impressive. It looks very clean, very professional. If that's the look you want to portray, then go with that look. Right. No, it's not at a price point that everyone's going to buy it. So it's not like you may be the only guy in your market. If you feel that's your selling point, do it. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, I don't care what your appearance is. I don't care what your setup looks like. You either rock the party or you don't. Forget this bad setup pages and all that. Either you deliver or you do not deliver, regardless of your setup, regardless of the facade and the lights and the pretty spinning stuff. So focus more on that and then figure your look. Brian, what are your thoughts? I, uh, well, the podiums are interesting if that's all you need is a controller and a laptop. I like a little more utility. I like room to set things down that I might need to have there, and it might vary from event to event. So although Joe's podium might work perfect for some people, I, I don't think it's my solution. Mm -hmm. But... Like Jay said, I mean, you got to use what works for you. I think that as DJs, we are pretty much the only people who really care about this crap. <laughs> yeah, they're probably. I don't think the general public has any opinion on it. They think we're does it sound good? Th does it look reasonably good? I mean, the thing that I think a lot of people don't understand, or a lot of DJs don't understand, is that. Yes, we see this stuff all the time. We're seeing it on social media. We're seeing our own setups every single weekend. And I'll hear DJs saying things like, well, I need to get some different lights because my light show is getting a little boring. To who? Yeah, to them. Yeah. Who, 
who else besides you is seeing this on a constant basis? You see it every week, so it's like, whatever, you're jaded. But someone in your audience may see it and say, oh my gosh, science fiction. This is amazing. I've never seen this before. Because mm -hmm. they haven't seen it before. So, yeah. I mean, it's one thing if you're doing repeat business with, with a, a, a client. Or if you're doing something on a consistent basis in school or whatever, you might want to mix it up a little bit, not to be boring. But, yeah, this table stuff or facade or or podium or whatever, whatever works for you, whatever floats your boat, but I really don't think the customer has an opinion on it. John, real quick, to, to yep. jump in, Brian, <clears throat> excuse me, if you want to give somebody a leg <laughs> up, go in your market, take a photo of the Joe Bun one, anything else you're considering, and go meet with the high-end wedding coordinators in your market and say, I'm considering buying one of these. Right. What's your feeling? And if 10 of them say, I love the Joe Bun one in black. Buy that. Sure, good idea. If they all say, "Ooh, I don't like that," you but I think you. you'll find that in your market, you can work with the right people because they'll appreciate that you're asking their opinion, but also that you're willing to spend the money on your appearance. Good idea. Very good. Idea. Great tip. That's there. Why we're here. Great tip. Every day. Well, that was worth Tuesday. worth the price of Feel admission good. tonight, right there. There you go. Next topic. Um, this one, this one could be a fairly quick one. Um, what would you charge for a retainer for a wedding? It'll be a quick one. Have you met me, John? Come on. Uh, <laughs> I know I, I could answer the question, but that's loaded. Here, I'll make this the simplest question of the night. One third of the entire deposit of the entire balance is due at the signing of the contract. The other two thirds are due seven days out from the event. Excellent. One third. Yeah, done. Brian? Uh, well, everybody's got to throw an opinion on this stuff. I do it the way I do it for a reason. And I didn't really fully understand the reason until the situation arose. I always tried to charge like 10, 20% for just the deposit. Because in the car business, what we learned was it doesn't really matter if it's $200 or $2,000. Money is glue. Once people put money down on something, they have like an emotional investment and they take uh, mental ownership of things once sure. they have money on it. So the amount of money to me didn't really seem to matter that much. But the other reason I take a very small amount down, uh, well, I had that stroke, as you know, and when I had it, it was not a big deal for people to take my events and get paid because I hadn't collected all this money and spent it on lawn furniture, you know, six months before the event. <clears throat> so it wasn't an issue to just go ahead and let people take events and, and take the balance, and they were very happy with the balance. The deposit was nothing. But I, that's I me. Feel, that's me. But the, the downside becomes if you're not charging enough in your market, like if, let's say just example, I'm $1,500, you are 1000 You take a $100 deposit, they meet me and they say, wow, we like him more. They're not that invested in you. So if they walk away from the 100 mm -hmm. I, I think you'd be surprised not. about that mental ownership that people well, take in things when it. they have money down on it. it but it's the amount of money. The other fact is true too, because at least then, if they decide towards the end of it they're walking, you're at least sitting in a spot of, well, I've got something because I may not book that date again. And yeah. this is a discussion that could go on and on and on. But right. That's where I came up with the one third. Oh, yeah. Uh, Gus in here is saying 25%. Joe's saying $200. I mean, it's, it's, it's all relative. Whatever you want to do, whatever you're comfortable with. I have my reasoning for doing what I do. Right. And I didn't under, fully understand the reasoning. I, I was paranoid about it because I don't like to take payment for things I haven't done yet. Sure. I like to do the job and get paid for it. That's just me. So it's a deposit just as glue just so they can take mental ownership of it. And then after I finish the job, then I get paid for it. And I never know what I'm going to add on to it or whatever. I, it's just how I do things. Excellent. But there's no right or wrong answer, but I do feel like that you should take some sort of deposit or retainer. Absolutely. Retainer. We should call it a retainer, right? Yeah, that's what take a re Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a retainer. I suck at legal. I'm not an attorney. I don't play, play one on, on television. TV, yeah. A retainer. Take okay. some kind of retainer. Let's jump to the next topic, guys. Uh, um, on a website, should I have a page on my website, like things to ask a DJ or a, a frequently asked questions to, to 
ask when hiring entertainment. Are these things that you think should be on today's websites, or is this something that we just did back in the the early two thousands to make ourselves feel good? I think we're starting think it, brain. Yeah, I, I think it depends on what it is. I have some things on my website, which, by the way, needs a complete redo because it looks like hell. It's it's like six years old, but I really tried to post something helpful. And it wasn't like, make sure your DJ has this and make sure your DJ does that. No, it was simply, don't put grandma in front of the speakers during dinner. You know, put your mm -hmm. young friends there. It was, those kind of tips are what I put on mine. Sure. And they were five. Just, you know, no matter who you book, think about these things. And I don't recall what they all were, but I actually did a video on it. And I, I did a write-up on it. And I invited people to take that link and put it on their website if they'd like to. And so they didn't even have to write it. They could just click on it and here are five things to help make your wedding a success. Whatever those five things were. Ultimately, you know, our job hasn't really changed that much. We play pre-recorded music for people. We put light shows up. Yeah, we do some talking on the microphone. We do some timeline creation. But ultimately, what really I think separates us today from others is how helpful we are. And if we can give helpful advice on our website, free helpful advice, I think that's very welcome and appreciated. But I think if you're just trying to write propaganda why you're awesome and somebody else might suck, I think that's a little dated. Excellent. Yeah, so I you agree. Time. Yeah, Jay? I, I agree with Brian on that. I think, I think there's enough information out there. And every time I check a DJ's website or look around, I find that whenever I see that section – it's always so angled at them. Now, I know it as a DJ reading it, but I have to think that as a customer, they probably realize it too, you know, because the questions aren't, you know, they're always the same thing. When should I hire my DJ? When we're available for your date. Some of our events, like, and then yeah. they go into something about them. It's what should we look for in a DJ? Someone who's professional and answers questions on their website like this. Like, I think we're kind of past that. I mm -hmm. think- you know, I mean, the better person to ask is the millennial bride getting married and say, what, what did you, what stood out on websites for you? Right. I think they go very quickly. I think a lot of it's done on their phone and they're not reading that shit. I mean, I'm sorry, but they're not, they're like, boom, like how much let's, let's be honest. They get to the site and they go, this guy got recommended how much. And even that's a dicey topic. But as far as answering the questions that nobody's asking, you know what? Put an article up. Put an article from bride.com or the knot that says what you're supposed to ask your vendors. It might be better served. Plus, it'll at least get you a link to a major website, and that might force traffic. I don't know. Yep. I'm done. Good, good. Uh, our last one here, gentlemen, we've been zipping through here pretty quickly. The last yeah. one, um, there was a meme that was circulated this past week about stop playing line dances. Uh, Nick Spinelli did that. Um, this, let's discuss this. Line dances at your events. Are these a good thing or a bad thing and why? And I think, Jay, I believe you're saying um, I've heard that name. I don't know who that guy is. I've you'll, heard the name. Yeah, you'll get to see him. He's at Photo Booth Expo coming up here. But yeah, Oh, he, he is. Oh. I always envision it's Jeff Spicoli. No, no, it's Nick Spinelli that did the, that. Je I don't know why I always think Jeff Spicoli. I think it's that that similar name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, similar. yeah no, I, you know what? It's it's cute and it's funny, but I mean, you're you're alienating three quarters of, if not more, of the wedding DJs who at some point are going to play the wobble, the cha cha slide, the <clears throat> shuffle, the electric slide, and then all the other songs that you can do those things to. You know what? Don't I'll I'll tell you what I won't tell him what to do at his events. Don't tell me. So. I don't think it's an issue of playing line dances. I think it's an issue of entertaining the crowd in front of you and doing what they want at the time. And if that means playing a song that they line dance to, go nuts. I did a wedding three weeks ago, no alcohol, very Christian. And the first song was Happy by Pharrell. And the second was Footloose. And they lost their minds to Footloose because they all line danced. So guess what? The rest of the night went country. Yeah. I did my famous little John into Luke Bryan. Mm -hmm. They went crazy. That's, <laughs> you know what? Don't, 
I won't tell you how to do your events any more than I'd ask you to tell me. I, I get why the meme got a little traction, but those of us that have been around for a while and do this for a living full time, you know what? It's, it's a quick laugh, but the reality is you play to the crowd in front of you or you're not really being a DJ. Sorry. Excellent. Brian? The line dance is a tool, just like any other tool in your toolbox. And you know, just because I own screwdrivers doesn't mean that I'm going to use a screwdriver for every project that I do. Most of the time, I'm not doing line dances early in the evening. Most of the time, I'm waiting till later in the evening. And and I think sometimes when you when you do that, you, you can say to yourself, and your audience recognizes that I didn't need a line dance to get started. You know, I this DJ played other things and 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 I enjoyed them. But now we're drunk and we're stupid. Let's do a line dance. There are other times when I do events where I cannot get people out on the dance floor, and the only thing Aunt Betty knows how to dance to is the electric slide. So they request it. For me to make a rule, one way or the other, to play line dances or not, I think is absolutely ludicrous. I was thinking about this because I'm, incidentally, writing my presentation for the mobile DJ meetup. I'm doing one called, I don't know, whatever John told me to call it. What was it? Uh, <clears throat> You're uh, creating the soundtrack. Creating, creating the soundtrack for your event. I've been working on this. I did version one and two. Sounds, I'm pretty happy with version two so far. But it's all print. I did. Yeah, it's pretty all print. Is. I didn't include this in the presentation. Or I haven't yet. But one thing I was thinking about was a wedding that I did one time where the groom absolutely did not want to hear any line dance songs. I mean, it was just a rule. It was it was unmovable. Was no it, line dance songs. So. I go to the event. I've got all these people there asking for line dances. And finally, I was like, you know what? He didn't want me to play any line dance songs. All right? Those were, and I got on the mic and I said this. Look, they don't want me to play any line dance songs. So I can't do it. However, there's nothing I can do to prevent you from line dancing to this next song. <laughs> I put on Low Shack and they did the electric slide to it. And it was perfectly legal, and the groom thought it was hilarious, and everybody had fun. So, I, I think if it's the client that says don't play line dance, then you don't. That that to me that's a separate question. I'm but could you really prevent people from doing the bus yeah. stop when you when you play? Yeah, but that's why you you have this. That's your as a DJ, you know when the when they say no line dances, you say okay, you're not going to play this 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 this. But you're going to play Get Jiggy with it because everyone is going to do the electric slide to it. Right. So, Well, no, that's how you get around it. You, but yeah. you get on the mic and be like, yeah, screw the client. I'm doing this. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, not so much. <laughs> Personally, I'm just saying. Yeah, no, so I've much. done events before, too. The, 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 duality the, groom, us. the groom was just like, you know, do not play whatever it was. Cha-Cha Slide. I hate that song. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Well, Cash I told him. Really supports us. I said, look. I understand you hate it. I'm not a fan of it either. I got to hear it a lot. Um, but and, and I would never play the song just to play it. I'm right. not that kind of guy. If it's appropriate, I'll play it. Having said that, you know that song is only about three minutes long? Chances yeah. are you're going to be outside having a cigarette or in the bathroom or something for at least three minutes sometime during the evening. Sure. How about I make sure you're not in the room when I play it? He says, oh, that would be awesome. That's a good compromise. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, good. we did that. Good we actually said, like, okay, I'm going to be gone for three minutes. You can play it now. I was like, hey, guys, we're going to play it now. Yeah, and I played it, and they all had fun. See? Perfect. There are things right. you can do with this. See oh, if you have the right relationship with, with the client. That's the, time, that's the time served that you learn these things. My, yeah. my list at every client is no, which is an absolute, yes, which is obvious, and then no by request, meaning that if no one requests the electric slide, I won't play it. But if people do, I will. And when clients hear that, they go, oh, okay, so so if you played it, it means people wanted it. Yes. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, no, no, no. We're good with that. It's 100%. They come back around and go, okay, I, I get it. It's Because I tell them, your wedding is for you up till the end of dinner. You, then you're hosting a party. If you host a party at your house, are you going to tell the DJ, just play Prince all night because everyone will love it? Well, they don't love Prince. They're all leaving early. Mm -hmm. John, John says in the comment section here, in Nick's video, he said he was not 
going to play line dances unless Bride or Groom was requesting them. He wasn't going to just throw them out there. Yeah, yeah exactly. and, and I, yeah, I'm, and I'm with him in that regard. Or, yeah, then we're all on the same page. Exactly. I, I have a, it was way. kind of a clickbait uh, meme he created. Like, it was, was probably a clickbait uh, title, and every new guy out there doing this crap, and I say new guy because I've been doing it for freaking ever since they invented the internet, does that clickbait crap. I try not to. People see the headline, they don't read the story. That's uh, just how the world works. So chances are, he said, don't play line dances, and what he really said in the video was very different. Mm -hmm. So I get that. Yeah, you oh, shouldn't this just do things. Oh, social media things. <laughs> you shouldn't just do things to do them. I, I don't believe you should do anything just to do it. You shouldn't talk on the mic just to talk on the mic. No, but There's by the way, reason for it. If, if you don't know the right crowd in front of you to drop wobble, then you know what? Stay home. Yeah, you probably Go back have. to your nine to five and stay home because there's a crowd that you drop certain tracks for. I'm sorry. And Excellent. you can say I'm wrong in the comments, but the reality is it's only my clients that can judge me. Yeah. I'm getting all defiant tonight. Yeah. Good. Well, that's, that's it, gentlemen. We've gone through our 10 for tonight. Get another 10. No, I need to get to bed. I'm old and tired and <sighs> more things to go on. So yeah, thank I've been awake for, 22 and a half hours. Holy yeah, cow. Brian's going for a world record. He's, he's going to go get that other lot of that mocha chocolate frappa. It's in his yeah. fridge. Oh, I got it right here. Down mm -hmm. bottle. He's got the big bottle right there. So, well, thank you guys oh, for being with yeah. us tonight out there. Um, you'll be able to, in two weeks from tonight, Brian and, um, and Jay and I will be at the Las Vegas, uh, air at the South point with the DJ and TV DJ convention. You can come hang out. you Truthfully, buy the exhibit hall pass for 50 bucks. You can come and hang out in the chill room, see the exhibit hall, talk in the hallways, and have a good time. Or you can buy the full pass and get into all the DJ seminars, whatever fits you the best. You can go find all yeah. that information out at djntv.com slash show. There's the link for the tickets, and there's the discount code. I don't know if it even works anymore. It's there. You try it. I didn't even try it today to see if it still works. So I got a thing where I don't do a lot of these presentations, and I don't see the seminar because that sounds like a lecture, and I hate lectures. Yeah. To be interactive with my things, I don't do a lot of these. I've done a few of them, um, but one thing that when, when I do these things, I, I do kind of insist on something. I have the highest attended seminar. It's just a thing. If I don't have the highest attended one, then then I've wasted my time. So I, I encourage you all to come. Luke at DJ Expo. I had more people in my seminar than laid back Luke when he gave the keynote. I I John, you did have I'm a nice. Just throw this out there. If you come by the chill room and you have a question about equipment manufactured from a company, I won't give the name because of certain limitations and laws, but the name rhymes with Pioneer DJ. If you have questions, as an added bonus to thank John for bringing me out, I'll answer those questions. But he will answer yes. them in code? And well, in sort of. So then you'll have to interpret what I, I'm not I will, saying they have I'll, to pay for anything, but 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 if you were to bring water, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yes, water. Jay got a haircut, and I'm totally missing yeah. the beard. I got to be honest. <laughs> it's growing back. It'll be there by um, chill. Well, yeah. you know, either shave the beard off or have the beard. I, I was well, getting into the Keanu Reeves thing. Well, that's yeah, that's that's what I was getting over the weekend. So that was kind of cool. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's not a hurtful thing to get the memes thrown up with the like Photoshop of Keanu. I'm yeah, like, that was a good one. Cool. I like that one. Yeah, that was cool. The Instagram. <laughs> DJ did Brand. you see that one, John? I did Instagram. not. I'm going to have to go look for You've it. You've got a Locust yeah. Jay's face and Keanu Reeves at the Oscars with his mother. It's hilarious. Oh, yeah. that one I did see. I did see yeah. that. Yeah, that was good. It's good. I, I, yeah. I had to look at that a couple of times. Like, and please rude. follow it. DJ B R A N N A N on Instagram. Whatever that means. Thank you. I want <laughs> to be right. famous like everyone else. Yeah, maybe someday. Got to use yeah, more clickbait right. titles. All right, thank you guys for being with us. We'll be back again uh, next week with a uh, with another show as we get ready for the DJ and TV DJ event coming up here in two weeks. Good night, everybody. <laughs>